boats these days are more complex than ever. The systems that we run, even in trailer boats like this, are very, very comprehensive. Sounders, stereos, radios. Andrew, that's your electrical system. Yes. Uh, and the centerpiece of that system is your battery or batteries. Now, I want you to think of your batteries as your electricity fuel tank. Ooh. And for a day out on the water, it's important to know that you have enough gas in the tank. Nice. Whether it's starting the engine, running the sound, or powering an anchor winch, or pumping out the bilge, modern boats increasingly rely on electrical power. Battery makers have noticed, and there are plenty of batteries designed specifically for a life at sea. Wet cell, gel cell, and AGM, or absorbed glass mat, are the common choices for boaters, but probably more important than your choice of battery will be how it's set up in the boat. Electricity 101, so this is the system. Um, your engine will generate electricity. That then comes to your batteries where it is stored. And then up here are the things that will consume your electricity. That's your sounder and your electric engine, things like that. Now, the most simple version of that is a single battery system. With a single system, everything relies on the health and condition of that one battery. If for some reason you run it flat, you're on your own. It's not going to go. It's not going to go. It's got a flat battery. We're going to have to jump start it. It's a good idea in a single battery setup to have another way to start the engine. As boats and engines get bigger, the typical fix is to add another battery, the dual battery system. And that's where your battery isolator switch comes in. And they're very clever bits of gear because you can select which battery you want to use, which gives you options. Your average isolator switch will have four positions. Off does what it says and switches the batteries off. Nothing goes out, nothing comes in. The both position basically turns the two separate batteries into one big one. Like the single battery system, you can run it flat, but it should take twice as long. Positions one or two allow you to switch off or isolate each of the batteries individually. Switch to one and you can draw and charge that battery while battery two stays unchanged. So isolator is good. Isolator with, get this Andrew, a VSR, Ooh. a voltage sensing relay attached is even better. A fairly recent addition, the voltage sensing relay can do some of that switching for you. The off and both positions stay the same, but if say battery one is selected, the VSR will allow battery two to accept charge while only letting battery one deliver charge. In theory, battery two will be fully charged and ready to go. So a bit like your fuel tank, your battery will have a capacity usually measured in amp hours, but that's only kind of half the story. What you really want to avoid doing is running your battery flat. Dead flat is no good. They don't really come back from it. 50% is basically as far as you want to go. So 100 amp hour battery, really 50 amp hours. You have to think about this. Trickle and solar charges are a great way of keeping your batteries topped up and ready to go, but like any of the systems on your boat, the battery system requires a bit of periodic maintenance to keep the sparks flying. <laughs>